Looking for a great AV receiver under $1,000 in 2022? Look no further than our top picks. With features like 4K Ultra HD and an input range of any type, these receivers are perfect for anyone looking to improve their television experience. So what are you waiting for? Start shopping today and see which one is best for you. Links have been added to the description box. Come on, let's get started. At number 1 is Onkyo TX NR6107.2 Channel AV Receiver. In this series, Onkyo offers the TX NR6100 as the best 7.2 channel AV receiver. It sits above the entry level TX NR5100, which is also 7.2 channel, and below the TX NR7100, which is the only 9.2 channel receiver available. While the TXN R6100 appears to sit comfortably at an affordable price point, it can offer a wide range of additional features that make it an excellent choice for a wide range of applications. Let's take a look at what the TXN R6100 has to offer before we go into depth. We have mentioned that this is a 7.2 channel AV receiver with 100 watts of power per channel. THX certified as most Onkyo units are and supports both Dolby Atmos and DTS-X. Also on board are HEMI 2.1, USB and Bluetooth playback, AirPlay 2, Chromecast, DTS Play 5, Sonos integration, Rune, Spotify Connect, among many others. The unit comes with Onkyo's Aku EQ calibration system while it belongs in the first batch of new releases that feature bug-free HDMI 2.1 ports that plagued all 2020 AV receivers. In general, the TXN R6100 appears to have fewer features on paper than what we saw in the TX RZ50, but this was not unexpected. Although the unit belongs to a completely different category, it is still able to deliver a lot for the price. Additionally, the receiver supports Dolby Digital, Dolby True HD, DTS and DTS HD Master Audio in addition to Dolby Atmos and DTS X. Unfortunately, since this is a low to mid-tier release, we don't get either a Max Enhanced or Aura 3D. But honestly, you don't lose much, and most likely you wouldn't be using these anyway if you bought such a receiver. A typical upmixing technology is Dolby Surround or DTS Neural X. Upmixing text converts stereo and legacy mixes into upmixes so that all your speakers are used. The receiver also supports the relatively new Dolby Atmos Height Virtualizer, which started becoming a standard lately which allows you to create a virtual setup and give you the illusion of audio from places where there are no real physical speakers. As well as Dolby's Virtualizer, there's DTS Virtual X, which does the same thing for DTS mixes, but height speakers don't work with this. There are seven channels of amplification built into the TX NR6100, each rated at 100 watts. Obviously, if you connect more than two speakers, this number goes down, but unless you measure specifically, you never know by how much. With the built-in amplifiers available, you can create a Dolby Atmos system up to 5.2 two channels. You can create a 7.2 channel system if you aren't interested in Atmos. The receiver limits the number of channels available in the main zone to 5.2 channels if you intend to connect a pair of speakers to another room with Zone 2 capabilities. The TXN R6100 is another example of how Onkyo has done so many things right with their latest releases. It may not impress as much as the TX RZ50 we tested recently, but the NR6100 comes at a much lower price and is targeted to a very different market. In contrast to the RZ series, which are aimed primarily at enthusiasts, the NR6100 is intended to find a better balance between price and features as a direct replacement for the award-winning TX NR696 of 2019. Onkyo's TX NR6100 receiver has a great build quality and design, a great audio output, a great overall performance, and a large number of features that will surely keep most people looking for an affordable 7.2 channel receiver satisfied. With HEMI 2.1 ports that are bug free, the NR6100 along with other new releases is future proof, which is essential if you don't change your audio equipment very often. In terms of its downsides, the TXN R6100 may feel a bit more expensive because the Yamaha RXV6 is less expensive, but the Yamaha lacks some features, so the price difference may be justified. 
then we have exactly the same problems as the ones we mentioned in our TX RZ50 review as the TX and R6100, as it is hard to find. Just like all Onkyo products, most stores are out of stock, so you have to be lucky to find one available. Even though the NR6100's lower status compared to the RZ50 may warrant an upgrade, the remote certainly needs it. As a final word, the Onkyo TX NR6100 is a very capable AV receiver if you are looking for a 7.2 channels unit with great audio output and plenty of online and offline features at a price that won't break the bank. You will enjoy a very satisfying cinematic experience for many years to come, whether you are a casual or advanced user. At number 2 is the non-AVR X1700H 7.2 channel AV receiver. In 2022, many were hoping that Denon would release a new lineup of AV receivers, but it seems we will have to wait for a bit longer. We still want to look at some of Denon's previous releases. So in our Denon AVR X1700H review today, we'll be checking out the smaller model available in their Premium X Series series. In spite of the fact that Denon has separated their AV receivers into two categories, the X Series and the S Series, some models from both, seem awfully similar in terms of design and specifications. As a result, series share a lot of common hardware and their differences are extremely small at first glance. So what does the X1700H have to offer? The unit features 7.2 channels of built-in amplification with 80 watts of power, supports Dolby Atmos and DTS, X along with the usual virtual and upmixing tech such as Dolby Surround, DTS Neural, X, Dolby Atmos Height Virtualization, and DTS Virtual, X as well as the Odyssey Malt EQXD Auto Calibration System and a host of extra features like a Definition Audio, POS Technology, or Play 2, Voice Control, Custom Integration, HDMI Upscaling, and HDMI 2.1 Ports. In order to help you decide, which AV receiver is best for you. We will also point out what is different between the X1700H and the S760H as we analyze this AV receiver. So without further delay, let's get started with our review. With its audio capabilities, the X1700H offers the level of performance you would expect for such a system. There's support for Dolby Atmos and DTS, X object-oriented audio tracks, as well as upmixing and virtual technology features. In terms of upmixing, we find the usual Dolby Surround and DTS Neural X. These upmixing techs convert stereo and legacy mixes to take advantage of all your speakers. In terms of virtual technology, Dolby Atmos Height Virtualization and DTS Virtual X can produce sounds originating from virtual speakers around a room where there are no physical speakers. There is no doubt that this virtual technology is not as good or accurate as real physical speakers and it is very room dependent. It's also often very overprocessed, something that was never very appealing to us. Both 403D and a Max Enhanced are kept only for the higher tier releases in the EX series, so they are missing from this list. Support for these is minimal, so you don't lose much. Compared to the S760H, the AVR X1700H has slightly more power a better audio calibration system, Zone 2 stereo output, and IR input, a detachable power cord, and a longer warranty. Would these be enough to justify the price? You have to decide what your needs are, but if you really need any of the above, we think it would be worth it. In terms of performance, the X1700H AV receiver is on par with any Denon unit that we have recently tested. Its audio output and quality were great. Its surround performance was phenomenal. It came with a lot of features, both online and offline, and it has three HDMI 2.1 ports with 40 Gbps capability, which makes it an excellent gaming setup. It's too bad Denon took out the HDMI port on the front, and the remote needs a serious redesign to go along with a more modern UI. Last but not least, keep in mind that the Bluetooth receiver is mostly designed for small to medium-sized rooms as it doesn't have the power for larger ones. Bringing our review to a close, the Denon AVR X1700H is a very solid and worthy entry into Denon's X series. It has the potential and features to be the heart of your system for many years to come, regardless of whether you use it for movies, gaming, or both. We highly recommend this product.
At number 3 is Denon AVRX 2700H 7.2 Channel AV Receiver. No matter what type of user you are, Denon is a name that you have definitely heard. Whether you are a casual or hardcore user, Denon has made a name for themselves by consistently releasing quality receivers each year, especially in the AV receiver segment, and by pricing them just about right have managed to capture a significant share of this market with their very consistent releases. In today's Denon AVR-X 2700H review, we will take a look at the Denon's cheapest model in the X-Series and see what it has to offer. With these yearly releases, we usually get small updates with some minor additions. With 2020, we were introduced to HEMI 2.1 receivers for the first time, with everything that comes along with it. This marked a big leap forward for AV receivers. Despite the lack of content, we also get 8K resolution pass-through, HDR10+, and many gaming eccentric features such as ELM, VRR, QMS, and QFT. Even though no content has been released yet, there are, however, a plethora of features included in the AVR-X 2700H that are not limited to these. In order to support Dolby Atmos and DTS-X in addition to the standard virtual and upmixing technology like Dolby Surround, DTS Neural, X, Dolby Atmos Height Virtualization, and DTS Virtual, X, the receiver has 7.2 built-in channels of amplification with 95 watts of power per channel. It also has the slightly less capable Odyssey Malt EQXD auto calibration system and is fully loaded with extras like high resolution audio in essence. The AVRX 2700H is an enhanced version of the AVRX 2600H with all of the new features that HDMI 2.1 has brought. But does it perform the same way and how does it compare to its competitors? In addition to supporting Dolby Atmos and DTS, X object oriented audio tracks. The receiver also includes up mixing and virtual technology features to cover all room configurations and needs. The standard up mixing technology is Dolby Surround and DTS Neural X. What these up mixing techs do is up convert stereo and legacy mixes so all of your speakers can be used. With regard to virtual technology, DTS Virtual X can create sounds that are generated by virtual speakers in your room, even if there are no physical speakers present. This virtual technology obviously isn't as good and accurate as having real physical speakers and are very much room dependent. Also, the sound can be very over-processed at times, something we are not particularly fond of. A Max Enhanced and Oro 3D are both kept for the higher tier releases, so this would be the only thing missing here. It features seven built in channels of amplification and each channel can pump 95 watts of power, making it the entry-level model in the X-Series. This number should be taken with a grain of salt, as manufacturers always give ratings with only two channels powered, which means that when all seven channels are active, the number drops significantly. For maximum immersion, you can go all the way to a 5.2, two-channel audio setup with two overhead speakers supported by the supported channels. For our test, we used a 5.12 setup with a single subwoofer and two Atmos speakers placed at the middle of the viewing area. During our first movie test, we tried out Greyhound, which aired on Apple TV Plus and was accompanied by a jaw-dropping Dolby Atmos mix that was just as immersive as you would expect from a WW2 Navy movie set in 2020. Throughout the movie, the Fletcher-class destroyer USS Keeling, also known as Greyhound, attempts to navigate convoy HX-25, a convoy of 37 Allied ships, to Liverpool through the Atlantic. With the 2020X2700H, Denon continues to offer consumers excellent products. As the lower denominator in the X-Series, the X2700H managed to be a very respectable entry for anyone looking for a good 7.2 channels, Dolby Atmos capable AV receiver, as it has both the performance and features to satisfy even the most demanding of users. However, we often mention that these yearly releases do not usually provide many new features because there is not enough time between them. In other words, the X2700H, along with many other 2020 receivers, marks a big step forward for 8K and HEMI 2.1 in the AV receiver market. With HDMI 2.1, we also get a pretty impressive list of new technologies and features, including 8K 60HZ, 4K F 120HZ, HDR10+, LVRR, QMS, and QFD video pass-through. As a final note, we should not forget that Bluetooth headphones 
can now stream independently or in parallel to the main speakers. It boasts a very good build quality and a variety of features, including Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, upmixing and virtualization technologies, high-resolution audio, POS and AirPlay 2, online, USB and Bluetooth streaming, and many more that add so much value to the device. Is there anything bad to say? Well, the shaky HDMI 2.1 release would be the most obvious one. In addition to not being able to support specific 4K at 120Hz signals, Denon also had to cut two HDMI inputs in order to switch one of the remaining six to 2.1. The receiver lost both the front one and the back one, which severely limits the number of devices it can connect to. Last but not least, we would like Odyssey Mult EQ Editor to be free, and a better remote design would be ideal. This Denon X2700H is still a very stellar receiver that can be a great choice for anyone looking for a 7.2 channel receiver that supports Dolby Atmos but does not cost an arm and a leg. At number 4 is Pioneer VSX935 7.2 channel network AV receiver. Home theater manufacturers continue to cater to those who want far more from their setup in a world where soundbars dominate most setups. The latest line of Pioneer receivers is no exception to Pioneer's tradition of crafting devices of exceptional quality and value. One of these, the Pioneer VSX935 AV receiver, borrows many of the features from its premium Elite line, providing those on a budget with exceptional sound and connectivity when they have speakers that are efficient enough to drive with its moderate power output. The receiver has seven channels of built-in amplification and can be configured in many ways using a very intuitive graphical interface. This includes traditional 7.1 surround, 5.12 Atmos, or DTSX setup, or even high channel setup similar to Aura 3D. During room correction analysis, the system automatically calculates the distance between your speakers and lets you know where they are physically located. The system has two subwoofer connections via RCA, which require self-powered subwoofers. In spite of its capability to drive seven channels of audio, this unit is relatively lightweight, so it can be easily moved around on your rack. The front panel is large and bright, and the back speaker connectors are made of hardened plastic and accept either bare wire or banana plugs to ensure compatibility with any modern equipment. There are two HDMI outputs on the top left of the unit, both of which support HDCP 2.3 and 8K pass-through. Streaming sticks can be connected with both USB and Wi-Fi network connections and a USB power outlet. There are three HDMI inputs that allow 8K, while three others are limited to 4K. In addition to the four regulated level analog inputs, the unit comes with a built-in phono preamp input for turntables with moving magnet cartridges, an FM radio coax connector, and an EEM loop for use with the provided antenna are also included, along with the coax RCA input and Toslink optical input. Two RCA outputs are available for connecting to one or two subwoofers. Depending on your preferences, an assignable stereo RC audio preamp output is available for multi-zone use. In addition to a 6.35mm headphone jack and a 3.5mm room connection mic, the front panel also features USB and mini jack analog inputs. It is a functional remote control, even if it is a bit pedestrian, with rubber buttons that will allow you to control the majority of the unit's functions without ever having to leave the couch. With its robust network capabilities, the VSX935 can truly serve all your audio needs. You can control Spotify, Title, Amazon Music, and more with the Pioneer Music Control app. Tune in Internet Radio, Apple AirPlay Wo with Siri, Google Chromecast, and Alexa can also be connected to the app. This model offers the pleasure of full HD audio playback over the network, including FLAC, ALAC, EFF, LAF, and DSD files at 24 bit at 192K HC. Fantastic to see. It's possible to fine-tune the sound in each room by using an included microphone, thanks to the Macaq C setup process. Although less robust than Durac, Macaq C does just fine with even the most challenging of layouts. In spite of the fact that I usually disable these corrections, particularly for stereo listening, I was pleasantly surprised at how quickly and easily you could dial in the system, and even the custom EQ curves were easy to adjust for your personal taste. With 80 watt channel, the VSX935 won't be sufficient to drive my usual front channel speakers, but I was pleased to find that the receiver did an excellent job with a wide range of speakers, 
from my SVS Prime elevations, which I use for Atmos to Definitive Technologies PM700s, and up to my highly revealing but slightly power-hungry B and W805 diamonds, a wide soundstage and ample mid-range reproduction were provided by the VSX935 at moderate volume. A few harsh notes could be heard from the unit when cranked up, as it struggled to deliver the impact of robust soundtracks like Dune's 4K Atmos track or Disney Plus stream of The Mandalorian. Given the relatively poor implementation of the wireless standard, Spotify's built-in app sounded significantly better than when connected via Bluetooth for streaming music. With its robust networking support built into the VSX935, you're going to benefit from letting its internal decoding handle all of your music and movie needs. For most consumers looking beyond a soundbar solution, the Pioneer VSX935 receiver is a great choice for music and movie soundtrack playback. Featuring the same technology as its high-end elite cousins, this model fits a sweet spot for those looking for a robust, capable, reasonably priced model that will make the most of their listening experience. With its ease of operation, robust functionality, and multi-channel capabilities, you're sure to get plenty of years out of using such a capable product. With its ease of operation, robust capabilities, and multi-channel capabilities, it's easy to see the VSX-935 becoming the heart of your home theater setup. At number 5 is Denon AVR-960H 7.2-channel AV receiver. Featuring 7.2 channels and a single HDMI 2.1 port, the Denon AVR-960H is one of the most premium units available and features the most premium features. It is interesting to note that there have been some interesting developments since the initial batch of receivers had the HEMI 2.1 bug. It has become increasingly difficult for consumers to decide which Denon S-Series or X-Series model is the best and what differences there are between them because they are very close in price and specs. During our testing of this unit, we'll point out its similarities to corresponding units and what you need to pay attention to. But first, let's review its specs as we do with all of our reviews. The AVR-960H comes with 7.2 channels of built-in amplification, with 90 watts of power per channel, supports Dolby Atmos and DTS-X along with the usual virtual and upmixing tech like Dolby Surround, DTS Neural X, Dolby Atmos High Virtualization, and DTS Virtual X comes with the basic version of Odyssey called Odyssey Molt EQ Auto Calibration System and comes with plenty of extras like high-resolution audio. EOS technology, AirPlay 2, voice control as well as HDMI upscaling and a single HDMI 2.1 port. Denon's AVR-960H is yet another solid product with a good performance to price ratio and plenty of extras and features. In terms of audio formats, we get the usual, so there are no real surprises. There have been many complaints about some 2020 models, so let's start with our analysis to see what has changed from back then. The receiver contains upmixing and virtual technology in addition to supporting Dolby Atmos and DTS-X object-oriented audio tracks to meet the needs of all users and different room setups. Dolby Surround and DTS Neural X are two upmixing technologies that are readily available to utilize every speaker you have. These upmixers combine stereo and legacy mixes. When it comes to virtual technology, the DTS Virtual X and Dolby Atmos height virtualization virtualizers can produce sounds that appear to emanate from speakers in your space but aren't actually there. It is obvious that these virtual technologies are far less accurate and reliable than real physical speakers, and they are very much dependent on space. Also, the sound is often overprocessed, which is something we were never very fond of. There is only one thing missing here, Oro 3D and the Max Enhanced, which are only included in the X series higher tier releases. Each channel of the AVR-960H can pump 90 watts of power, and it comes with seven channels of built-in amplification. As always, you should not be fooled by this number as manufacturers always give ratings with two channels driven, meaning when all seven channels are active, this number will drastically fall. With the supported channels, you can go all the way for a 5.2, two channels audio setup with two dedicated overhead speakers for maximum immersion. With so many units available, Denon is trying to cover all bases, so we set up a 5.1, two setup with a single subwoofer, and two Atmos ceiling speakers placed in the middle of our viewing area. As a result, many of them feel very close in specs, making it hard to choose the one that best suits your needs. 
In addition to a better Odyssey system, custom integration, a longer warranty, and other extras, the X-Series offers a bit more, but these features are worth it only for those who need them specifically. It will cover you entirely if you don't. This is a very capable AV receiver that has excellent audio output, crystal clear audio, and good surround and Atmos performance. The unit comes with all the extra features you will ever need both for offline and online use and its price is very affordable. We will point out two drawbacks for the unit. The initial units had a dreaded HDMI 2.1 bug except for the fact that there is only one HDMI 2.1 input, adapters for multiple HDMI inputs, and the Xbox Series X issues have both been offered by Denon. If you are a lucky buyer and got a unit manufactured after May 2021, you do not have to worry about all of this. We also have issues with the arcade UI and the cluttered remote. After so many years, the control scheme must be updated at some point after 2022. In our opinion, the Denon AVR-960H will cover all your needs and then some if you don't care about some of the more advanced features of the X-Series. Many 2020 releases had troubled starts, including this 960H, but Denon did its best to rectify all problems and as such, this 960H remains an AV receiver that we recommend highly. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please like it if you did. If you're new here, click the subscribe button. Wishing you all the best until the next video.